In this video, we are going to solve another uniform motion problem using a rational equation. Hannah drives to work 10 miles. Her commute time varies depending on what time she leaves her home, the traffic, and her average speed. If her ha average speed had been increased by 10 miles per hour, the commute would have taken six minutes less. So now we need to figure out what her average speed actually was in miles per hour and how many minutes it took her to drive to work. Now, Let's take a look at some of the important pieces of information in the problem. First of all, there's a hint. <laughs> if you click on the hint, the hint is telling you that we have to be working within the same units. So what that means is that if we're given her distance in miles and if we're given her speed in miles per hour, then we need to know what her time is in hours, not minutes. So the hint here is that we need to convert any measurement that's given to us in minutes two hours. So we're going to have to convert that six minutes into hours. So here's how we want to think about that. Six minutes would be six out of 60 minutes of an hour. So if you have six minutes, you have six sixtieths of an hour, which is equivalent to one tenth of an hour. So instead of saying it took her six minutes less, we could say it took her one tenth of an hour less. So that's the hint for this problem. We have to use the value one tenth of an hour instead of six minutes. Okay. All right. Now it talks about um, her average speed if we increased it by 10 miles per hour. So we have an original speed and then the speed that if we did increase it by 10 miles per hour and what those two different times would be. So we're going to call those trip one and trip two. So trip one is what she actually drove. Trip two is if she had been able to increase her speed by 10 miles per hour. So let's set up our three columns. We have our distance equals rate times time. And let's just remind ourselves of the units, miles for distance, miles per hour for rate. And then, of course, remember, we have hours for time, which we converted from minutes. Okay, so no matter what speed she travels at or how long it takes her, her distance is still 12 miles. That miles distance doesn't change. So the distance between her house and work never changes regardless of how fast she drives or how long it takes her. It's still 12 miles. Okay, originally her rate is just R. If possible, she could increase her rate 10 miles per hour, so that new rate would be R plus 10. Now we need to create ratios for the time, and when I say ratios, I mean we're going to rewrite time as the ratio of the distance divided by the rate. And then remember, for trip two, that time would have been one-tenth of an hour less than the time for trip one. So for trip one, let's write our time ratio. It's just going to be 12 over R. For trip two, our time ratio is 12 over R plus 10. Now, let's write our equation out in words first before we just start trying to place the variables in the appropriate spot. We know that the time for trip two is one-tenth of an hour less than the time for trip one. And that should help us set up our equation if we translate this sentence into algebra. Okay, so the time for trip two, we have represented that as the ratio of 12 over r plus 10, is, remember anywhere you see the word is, that is an equal sign, so 12 over r plus 10 equals now, it's one-tenth of an hour less than the time for trip one. So we want to start the right side of our equation with the ratio for the time for trip one, which is just 12 over R, and then from that we subtract one-tenth of an hour. Ah, now we have our equation written. Now we know what to do. Now we just have to solve the rational equation. This should hopefully make you think about finding the LCD and the LCD in this case would be 10 times R times R plus 10. So now we are going to multiply both sides of the rational equation by the LCD. So you can multiply by 10R times the binomial R plus 10 over 1. And now we get to distribute the LCD. So on the right side, when we distribute, the binomial R plus 10 is a common factor that will divide out. So we will be left with the numerator 12 times 10R. Then we have our equal sign. Now on the right side, when we distribute the LCD, the first time we distribute, 
the factor r will divide out. So we'll be left with 12 times 10 times the binomial r plus 10 minus, now let's distribute one more time. So now when we distribute, the factor of 10 is the common factor. So the factor of 10 will divide out. So we will have minus 1 times r times r plus 10. Mm -hmm. All right, now we need to clean everything up. Here comes the fun part. We get to distribute a little bit more. So on the left, we're going to get 120r equals. Now on the right side, when we first distribute that 12, then there's a 10, then there's the binomial r plus 10. You can think of it as distributing 120. So that will give us 120r plus 120. Then we're going to I'm sorry, I misspoke. We're going to have 120R plus 1,200. Sorry about that, because we're distributing 120 to 10. So that would give us 120R plus 1,200. Then we have minus, and we can think of it as distributing 1R into the R plus 10. Actually, you could think of it as distributing negative 1R. So we have negative R squared minus 10R. Okay, now we see that we have an exponent of 2, so our goal is to get the equation set equal to 0 and put into standard form. So after a little bit of simplifying, we will get 0 equals negative r squared minus 10r plus 1,200. Then, of course, we want to look for a GCF. We should notice the GCF is negative 1, so that leaves us with the trinomial r squared plus 10r minus 1,200. Okay, so at this point, you can stop the video and you can continue to factor on your own and you will arrive at the value of r, which will be her actual speed. Or you can keep watching and we'll go on to the next slide and we'll continue to factor. Okay, so at this point, we have 0 equals. Now we had our GCF of negative 1, but then we were ready to factor. So we needed factors of negative 1,200 that added up to positive 10. So that gives us r minus 30 and r plus 40. So because of the zero product property, we will get two um, solutions. So we get r minus 30 equals zero. We also get r plus 40 equals zero. So we get r equals positive 30 or r equals negative 40. Now remember, r stood for her actual rate um, or her actual speed. So we know that her speed cannot be a negative value. So we're going to throw out the value r equals negative 40. And we're going to keep the value r equals 30. So let's write down what that means. Her speed was 30 miles per hour. Now, if you remember, when you look at the original problem, not only did it ask you, though, for her speed, it also asked you for how long that took her, okay? So her speed was 30 miles per hour. Now, if you remember from the beginning of the problem, we wrote a time ratio. Her time ratio was 12 over R because her distance was 12 miles and her rate was unknown. Well, now we know her rate is 30. Whoops. Now we know her rate is 30, so her time is 12 thirtieths of an hour. 12 thirtieths of an hour. But we don't walk around speaking like that, right? We don't say it took me 12 thirtieths of an hour to get to work. <laughs> we want to know what that is in minutes. So we can make just a simple proportion. 12 out of 30 would be how many minutes out of a complete hour of 60. So really all you'd have to do here is multiply by 2 to figure out that that is 24 minutes out of 60 minutes in an hour. Um, and that makes sense because 12 is a little bit less than half of 30 and 24 is a little bit less than half of the full hour of 60. So Let's just make sure we remember her rate was 30. That was her miles per hour. And now this 24 60th of an hour, that means it took her 24 minutes. So if we go back to that original slide, um, we can fill in our answers. So her speed, whoops, her speed was actually 30 miles per hour. 
And it took her 24 minutes to get to work, which was 12 miles away. 